that was emotional. Oh, we just, uh, guys, we just interviewed the Columbine shooters, and it was very emotional. Oh, my gosh. And uh, Kim picks up all the emotional energy and feels some of the same feelings. So it wasn't easy for you, was it, Kim? No. You know, when they, um, the closer they get and uh, when they speak through their emotion, um, they use me to express that. So mm. sometimes I do get very emotional oh. and waterworks just happen, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Gosh. Well, I cry I'm, easily. Crying is purgative for me. Yeah, I watch Bambi too. and the mother dies. That's it. I'm gone. <laughs> I am gone. I feel you. Um, all right. Well, we got. I'll give Eric a choice this time. Uh, we're going to talk about either how to let go of a painful past, how to be un, uh, how to be comfortable with uncertainty, and um, feeling like you don't belong. Which one do you want to tackle, sweetie? He says he just keeps um, kissing the screen. He's, <laughs> he's kissing the screen. Oh, I gotta get the smudge he, marks off. He wants to tackle mm. um, how to deal with uncertainty or feeling uncertain about things. Okay. He's dancing. <laughs> so uncertainty. He's, everybody thinks, oh my God, uncertainty is terrible. It creates a lot of fear and and such. But what is your view on uncertainty? He says, first of all, you're exactly right. People don't like uncertainty because um, when they approach it, most of the time they default to fear. Mm. Um, it's a, and then that's, it's like a chain reaction, he says. And then that leads, that's because of control. People want control and yeah. feel the need to have control over people, situations, events. Um, he says, <laughs> he's talking really fast. He says, um, we need to look at uncertainty more as a huge window of opportunity. Um, if you feel uncertain about, and he's going to use me for an example. Um, Don't you love it when he does that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sometimes I share things I wouldn't normally share, but it's all good. <laughs> um, so right now I'm shifting my business, my little shop here, and uh, want to focus more on holistic wellness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah but still want to have the merchandise and that sort of thing. So I'm like, hmm, how am I going to make both work? I'm uncertain. Yeah. Um, but I'm approaching that still. I'm not scared. And Eric says, so when you approach it with, um, without fear, you're embracing opportunity. So there's a lot more opportunity to come with uncertainty rather than um, – if you approach it without fear, but if you approach it with fear, you shut down all those extra opportunities. Yeah. He says, so how do you get out of your fear? He says, um, this is a tough pill to swallow for a lot of you. He says, um, being able to surrender and knowing everything in front of you, everything ahead of you is going to work out as it should no matter what. Mm. He goes, all of you that went through the hustle and bustle of the holidays and worrying if I'm going to get this done, if I'm going to get that done, it all worked. It all still happened. So um, there's no reason to fall to fear of being uncertain if is this going to work or not um, or how is it going to work. Um, again, that's where the control comes in. So surrender from needing control and instead of needing control um, in those moments of uncertainty listen to your heart and feel he says if he says this is this this is a little side note he goes this is to help a lot of you cope with the need for control um, begin to feel then that will help you make decisions. Um, so you can be more decisive without needing the control part. I'm, I'm going to make this decision. I'm going to make that decision. He says, instead, um, just feel it out and you'll feel which way you should go, which way you shouldn't go. And then you'll be more decisive. And, and That's right. You, that, you say that. You say feel first, think second. First, uh, tap into your feelings and then let that produce a thought instead of the opposite. He says, exactly. And then when you feel stronger, when you feel, um, 
you'll be more decisive. And that in itself gives you power, but it's that personal self-loving power Mm -hmm. that you need. Um, So he goes, okay, getting back to just uncertainty and surrendering. um, Surrender to, he's smiling and he just like went like this. A lot (laughs) of stars. um, Surrender to the fact that there are a lot of opportunities ahead of you all the time. Mm -hmm. Uncertainty can make you feel... It can make you scared and it can make you shut down. But again, um, that's where you have to learn how to cope with the fear of it. Um, Find ways to be more decisive so you don't default to fear, he says. And then in the moments when you're more capable of surrendering, he says says this to me a lot and he's going to say it again. Um, Sometimes if you don't know what to do, don't do anything at all. Mm. Um, Just chill and feel he says feel it out first feel it out feel it out and then because if you connect your heart to let's say you have two possible outcomes Mm -hmm. if you connect your heart to this one and see it um role play it and then you connect your heart to this one what feels better he says that'll help you make your decisions Mm -hmm. um that'll help you be more decisive and if Mm -hmm. people are rooted in being more decisive they'll be more successful. They won't kind of crumble to feeling uncertain. Uncertainty says, um, or certainty can come from ego. He says, Mm. um, when I need certainty, I need answers. I need control. That's a very egocentric, ego-based concept for the most part, he says. Um, so again, a whole another lesson in detaching from ego in itself. Um, surrendering helps you do that. Surrender from the ego to be able to connect more to the way you feel. Because it's either, he goes, it's either ego or love people. <laughs> because you really yeah. can't reside in both. <clears throat> I see. Well, you know, uh, I look back on my life and there's have been so many times where I've been uncertain, but here I am still alive and well and everything worked out. Maybe not like I really wanted it to, but, you know, acceptable. But, you know, there, there was a time with in Eric's life where I was just uncertain where whether, Eric, you would grow to become an old man. You know, I was uncertain whether you would, you know, take your life or not. And that brought a lot of fear to me, and it was out of my control. And here we are now. He says um, the bigger message with all this uncertainty, especially in my life, Mom, and in your life, he says um, even in those really dark, scary moments where you're uncertain if I'm going to continue living or not physically, Mm. um, there are divine orders that are already written he says that's that contract that we always talk about. Yeah. So um, some of you, he says, have the capability of surrendering to that and knowing life is going to con- continue one way or another as it's supposed to, as it's in my contract. Um, so a lot of you can surrender to that knowing, well, I don't always have to have control because my divine contract is already written, so I'm always going to have what I need to to achieve that contract. Mm-hmm. Um but it's the human part of us, the it human is emotion the human part, yeah, that needs the understanding. He says yeah. that needs um, control over thoughts and over emotions and decisions. Mm. He says, but sometimes you have to realize, um, yowza, I don't know. <laughs> this is hard to say this um, as to you as his mom. But he wants everybody to hear this, too. He says, sometimes you have to understand, even a loving mother, you don't have permission to change anybody's journey. He goes like this. He's pointing to God. He says, that's really only up to God's source. Um, So as hard as that is for you guys to hear, he says, know that you're here for your journey. You're here for your experience. Now, Here's destiny, he says. Um, You're going to achieve that destiny no matter what. 
but then you're given, he calls it the wild card, and that wild card is free will to change the colors of your path along the way. Mm. Uh, but ultimately, he says, you're never given permission <clears throat> to change anybody's journey. So in those moments when you're uncertain of how things are going to play out or what you should or shouldn't do to help someone, follow your heart first. Feel where your heart is first. Do what your heart tells you to do. And then know that sometimes that's all you can do. Yeah, well, I tried everything I could. Nothing seemed to work. But on the other hand, look at look at, look at what's happened with this whole Chilling Eric thing. The tragedy has turned to something that that now, Eric, you're able to help so many people. So, you know, I guess he that says, was the Mom, opportunity in this horrible tragedy. He says, he says, Mom, I feel like I have a bigger voice than I ever could have oh, in yeah. my human life. Yeah. And he's thanking you for that. He says, uh oh, he's blowing you kisses, and he just says, I owe a lot of that to you. Ah, my, your sister is calling me. She always calls me during the sessions. I don't know what it is. Uh oh, uh oh. Perfect timing. That's what it is. I know. <laughs> seriously, gosh, comic relief. Uh, anything else on uncertainty? Just know that it comes from ego. Um, needing certainty comes from ego so surrender to life he says let life happen it'll be so much more enjoyable if yeah. you do okay that's good I've learned a lot from this session thanks so much thank you mom I love you he says okay everybody stay tuned for everything that uh, um, that follow so you, I'm going to give you little cheat cheats and notes and stuff at the end so be sure you read them all and until the next YouTube love everybody love you Eric love you Kim bye guys love you guys take bye. care bye <laughs>